Recently, I was looking back at a fitness Instagram that I made back in 2019 because I'm really into running and weightlifting. But I was looking back at those posts and I was cringing. Not only do I think they were not well written, but they were overly positive. And to be honest, I could see right through it. These posts like, yes you can, or yeah, I love what I do, yada yada yada. These posts may not be the worst examples of what I'm going to be talking about in today's mental health video, but they are certainly not the only ones. You may have heard the terms bad positivity, or fake positivity, or just fake. I personally refer to it as, and I know this is not my original saying, though I wish it was, toxic positivity. Now if you're like me and you've been around for a bit, or you've been on social media for the last five years, you know who I'm talking about. Now I'm not here to call out anyone specifically, but how a lot of these influencers on social media and books promote positivity is very unhealthy and potentially dangerous. Using myself as an example, I think back to those Instagram posts and the timing of when I wrote them, inauthenticity aside, I was hiding a lot of depression. And it really came to a head when I made this post right here. My last grandfather had passed away and my 23rd birthday was only three days later and the funeral was only two days after that. Now even though I acknowledged my feelings of depression and sadness, I kept those on the down low. Obviously I didn't want to divulge any personal information potentially to the whole world, but I was hiding from it. Now of course people on social media are entitled to keep their personal life and struggles out of public view, but the tactics used by these self-help gurus, YouTube and Instagram influencers and multi-level marketing gurus are bad and cult-like. Whether they're dopamine chasers by making an uber inspirational post on Instagram for likes, or these self-help authors trying to make a quick buck, it's all under the same umbrella. And they see you or me, a young person who is discontent with their current situation in life. Maybe their financial situation isn't great, or maybe they're not the most sociable person and they're looking to try and break away from their uh, dissocialization of people. They seek out direction and inspiration, therefore they discover these self-help gurus and social media influencers. And if you're in that spot in your life where you're not happy with where things are and you want to do everything you can to try and change your life, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're like me and you get caught up in this toxic positivity, without maintaining and applying critical thinking to what you are reading, you'll end up in a very vicious, dangerous and exhausting cycle of burying emotions by drowning yourself out with working, exercise, and your life will never change. See, I don't think it's real courtesy. That's why I don't like it. It's a bogus, it's a, it's a counterfeit generosity. Everybody wants me to go first. You, go, go ahead, please. Go, go. Even when I leave the house in the morning, there's a guy there at 7 a.m. waiting for me. I'm waiting for you to come out so you can go first. Go ahead, go. go. I think it's a post-Vietnam guilt syndrome of some kind. You know, it, America has lost its soul, so now it's going to save its body. It's like the fitness craze in this country. Well, it doesn't work that way, you know what I mean? Now, many others have covered this topic, and I'll leave links to some of my favorite videos in the description. But here's an important note. Those posts I made were when I was striving to reach the top of the world. I was getting up at 5 a.m. or earlier, going to the gym, checking things off my to-do list, getting stuff done. Everything was great. At least, that's what I wanted everyone to think. And this goes back to the cycle. Something that happened to me time and time again. So much so that it actually drove my anxiety and depression. It ended up with me in my doctor's office, which resulted in me being given a prescription for an antidepressant. I just, I just wake up and I'm, I feel horrible, I feel hopeless, I feel, you know, everything. You know, and I also feel really anxious and everything. So and it, it, it's, it gets really bad. So after bringing it up with my therapist um, multiple times, uh, we both agreed that uh, I should see my doctor, my family doctor, 
uh, because uh, this is not normal. So I did that. I went to the doctor yesterday and I was prescribed uh, Lexapro. Now antidepressants are a topic for another day and which I have a lot to say about, but that's how deep the rabbit hole of toxic positivity took me. Being surrounded by positive messages and outlooks without addressing the negative in your life can drive you mad and can drive you further down the rabbit hole than me. If you're where you want to be and things are going well, then your behavior should be activated so that you go and get things. Now, one of the negative consequences of that is that if you're really in a good mood, really happy, you're going to be impulsive and make mistakes. You know, because you hear these dough-headed, that's a very minor word, people who are always pushing happiness as the, as the key measure for, for successful existence. It's so ill-informed that it's embarrassing that that even happens. Positive emotion makes people impulsive. Maniacs, for example, which is really, if you, that's mania, right? Bipolar disorder. If you're manic, you're one happy person, way too happy. Everything is great. Nothing but wonderful things that are beyond your imagination are going to happen to you, and they're gonna happen fast. And so you're down to the mall to buy everything you can possibly get your hands on because you have a hundred uses for everything. And then a week later, you know, you crash into your depressive episode and you realize that you're $150,000 in debt and you've alienated everyone that you know. It's like that's untrammeled positive emotion. Now, sometimes drowning out negative circumstances with work, exercise, and video games isn't inherently bad at first. These things can provide an easy distraction for your problems, but that's the thing. They're distractions. Distractions can help clear your mind and help you come back to these problems and address them with objective thoughts. Everyone knows the truth. No one is ever happy all the time. If that were true, it'd be in our DNA. Some people are highly, highly upbeat and bubbly, and it isn't a facade, and they're not hiding behind anything. But those people still have problems. And the reason they come off more upbeat and bubbly is likely because they've figured out how to settle these problems themselves. I can often turn people envious and maybe even a little bit resentful at those people. I have to admit I am a little guilty of this myself. I think especially with the way the state of the world is and we're spending a lot more time at home and drowning ourselves out with work and other leisurely activities has become much more limited. We get tired of watching the same TV show or playing the same video game. We begin looking inside ourselves to discover all our insecurities and demons that we've been hiding from and hopefully, maybe, we can start growing past them. We start connecting dots that we never thought of before. It's yet another deep rabbit hole. But maybe, just maybe, we can grow past them. Thanks for watching, guys. Check the links in the description for videos related to this topic. A uh, couple shoutouts to one, uh, Anna's Analysis and James Janney. Both great videos about toxic positivity, multi-level marketing gurus, and that sort of thing. Also, check out a podcast I discovered on Spotify, Toxic Positivity by Lillian Lalo. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.